we think because we're reducing the amount of carbs that we eat or we're watching our sugar intake that we're totally scot-free of any potential issues when it comes down to insulin resistance. Well, it doesn't seem to be the case. You see, fats can actually influence insulin resistance too. And this is a little bit sketchy because it kind of throws a wrench in a lot of what we look at. But if we understand the kinds of fats, we understand the amounts, and we understand the basic physiology, it can help us out a bunch. I'm talking mainly about palmitate, okay, a type of saturated fat that you're gonna find in most meats and a lot of cheeses and things like that. Okay, now we have to understand, first of all, there is this thing called HMGA. HMGA is a nuclear factor, which means it activates gene transcription for insulin receptors. An insulin receptor is where insulin ultimately binds to, okay? So if insulin receptors are not being created, then you have less places for insulin to bind to, which can certainly lead to insulin resistance because the insulin has nowhere to bind. Now, what does saturated fat have to do with this in general? Well, excess saturated fat has been linked to a sustained downregulation in the expression of insulin receptor genes. What this means is that when we overeat saturated fat, which by the way is very easy to do, especially on a low carb protocol, it actually changes the gene expression so we don't produce as many insulin receptors. There was an interesting study, it was published in Cellular Physiology and Biochemistry, and it looked specifically at this. It looked at skeletal muscle tissue and it found that skeletal muscle tissue cells that were treated with palmitate, with saturated fat, and then exposed to insulin, well, there was a 2x decrease in the occupation of insulin receptors, meaning that half the insulin receptors weren't even receiving the signal from glucose anymore after there was a lot of saturated fat in the equation. Okay, what is potentially going on here? If we understand it, we can fix it. Hey, I put a link down below for Thrive Market first and foremost. Okay, before we get into the science, that is a 30% discount link. Okay, they're a big sponsor on this channel, and because you're watching this video, you can save 30% off your entire grocery order. So if you go online to Thrive Market, use that link down below, just stock up your grocery cart, get everything shipped to your doorstep, but you're gonna save 30% off your entire grocery order, plus get a free $50 gift when you use that special link. That is a very exclusive link for people that watch my channel. So you're gonna save 30% off no matter what you choose. Keto foods, fasting type stuff, paleo foods, vegan, whatever, it doesn't matter. It's all there down below in that link. So there was a study that was published in Diabetes, Obesity, and Metabolism. I found this very interesting because it was a post-mortem study. So it took a look at people that had passed away and they hypothesized that approximately 50% of the insulin producing cells have already died by the time people are diagnosed with diabetes. What this means is that we're not really producing insulin properly, even by the time most people are diagnosed. Now, what does this have to do with this whole saturated fat equation? Well, it actually tells us a lot more of everything. You see, when we produce insulin, producing insulin is a product of receiving energy from fuel. So it is our fuel supply, whether it's glucose or fat or anything, that ultimately fuels a pancreatic beta cell, which produces insulin. Okay, so glucose or fats, they will fuel that pancreatic beta cell and it will load up with ATP. And it is this a load up of ATP that ultimately allows insulin to secrete. Okay, here's where things get wacky. Normally, these pancreatic beta cells get a signal from glucose and that fuels that cell enough to secrete insulin, triggers the cell to secrete insulin. If these pancreatic beta cells are constantly marinating in fats, okay, especially saturated fats because they take a longer time to break down, what happens is they have so much fuel already from the fat that when a signal from glucose comes in, it's a not even a big deal, they don't respond to it. They have been bombarded so much with fuel from energy dense fats that when glucose comes into the equation, they're like, oh, whatever, I barely need fuel. I've got fuel from fats already. In other words, the response to glucose is significantly attenuated. Essentially, there's no need for the energy from glucose. So it means that we're still producing insulin we're just not really producing insulin in response to glucose as well. 
This is exactly why taking a little break from high fat diets every now and then is very important. It doesn't matter whether you're keto or not. Taking a break from food in general can help restore this. And that's what's interesting because there's a study that was published in the journal Diabetologia that took a look at this. They did an eight week severe caloric restriction study where they put people on a 600 calorie per day diet. That is a lot of energy restriction. They found within the first seven days, it restored their insulin levels and it restored their fasting glucose levels within seven days. They also found that there was a decrease of intrahepatic lipids, so basically liver fat, by 30%. And they found they were ultimately able to restore beta cell function. So my point in saying this is that it's the overeating of foods, but especially the overeating of calorically dense foods, such as saturated fat, that can trigger this beta cell unresponsiveness. But it is entirely fixable by changing the makeup of our diet periodically. So with great power comes great responsibility. If you're going to eat a lot of, say, saturated fat and a lot of ribeyes, I'm not saying it's the end of the world, but you do need to flip that on its head now and then and allow yourself to regain beta cell responsiveness. That is your responsibility. Otherwise, you can absolutely develop insulin resistance while being on a ketogenic or lower carb protocol. Here's something that's very interesting though. There is also something called saturated fat induced apoptosis. This is where so much saturated fat is in the picture that it actually causes the cell to die. It actually triggers apoptosis, premature cell death. And what happens is non-esterified fatty acids that come in from consuming way too much in the way of fats, basically so much fats the body just doesn't have time to deal with them, you have circulating NEFAs, non-esterified fatty acids. These non-esterified fatty acids can actually cause damage to what's called the endoplasmic reticulum, which is kind of a house for protein and calcium and things like that. To make matters very simple, it causes a massive influx in the cytoplasm of calcium. This influx of calcium in the cytoplasm causes oxidative stress and can actually cause the cell to die. This can absolutely, this is a beta cell, right? It can affect how much insulin we produce because the beta cell is essentially dying early, not able to produce insulin. But there is a fix to this or a preventative. There's a study published in the Frontiers of Pharmacology that found that oleic acid, okay, like that you would find in good quality olive oil, this can actually prevent the damage from the saturated fat in the first place. They found that monounsaturated fats taken in alongside saturated fats actually negated or reversed the negative effects of the saturated fat. Now, researchers hypothesize it has to do with the antioxidant content of the olive oil. Okay, so oleic acid has high potency antioxidants in it. Okay, we've got all kinds of different mechanisms there that it could be acting upon that are actually preventing the cellular damage that is occurring from essentially the lipid toxicity of so much saturated fat. One of the things I know you're wondering is, okay, well, how much saturated fat is the right amount? Regardless of what diet you're doing, okay, whether you're keto, whether you're paleo, whether you are high carb and you still have fats, 10% of your total calories tops should be coming from saturated fat. Okay, it just, when you look at the insulin resistance piece, it's a very important factor to weigh in. There's even some studies, if you look at a ketogenic diet specifically, they took a diet that was ketogenic, that was high saturated fat and low polyunsaturated fat, and then they compared that to low saturated fat with high polyunsaturated fat. Not only did they find that the lower saturated fat group produced almost three times as many ketones, okay, that's awesome. They also found that it negated the potential insulin resistance issue. They actually improved insulin sensitivity by having lower saturated fat and higher polyunsaturated fat on a ketogenic diet. And then they also found that it ended up decreasing or not increasing rather their cholesterol, the lipid profile. So it's like, okay, if you're doing low carb and you're mad at me for doing this video because I'm talking about possibly lowering your saturated fat intake, consider what we're after. Do you want to eat your saturated fat or do you want high ketones? Do you want insulin sensitivity? And do you want a nice lipid profile? I mean, I'll eat my ribeye until I'm blue in the face. Don't get me wrong. But if I can throw some good quality polyunsaturated fats in there to negate the potential negative aspects of that, I absolutely positively will. So it's kind of sketchy when we understand that it's not just carbs that influence insulin resistance. We do have to look at the big picture. We're learning something new every day. I'll see you tomorrow.